Good morning, everyone. It's a little bit after sunrise, maybe 15 or 20 minutes after sunrise. And I am in the Moab, Utah area right now. I'm actually 50 feet from the boundary of Arches National Park. I'm parked next to this large sandstone blob that I think is called Jug Rock. And there's a fence right here. And this fence is the boundary marker for Arches. Here's a zoomed in look at the rock formations and arches, including some arches you can see on the horizon there. Longtime viewers will know that I've been to this park a lot. I literally wrote the book to hiking in Arches National Park. I'm very, very familiar with this park. I've been here literally dozens of times. I've been coming here since I think 2002 or 2003. That's when I first came to Arches National Park. And on that trip, I remember I hiked up to Delicate Arch, which is the most famous arch in Utah. It's the iconic Utah arch that's on the Utah license plates. Probably the most famous natural arch in the world. And I've come here to this spot on the outskirts of Arches National Park to hike to Delicate Arch from a back way. I've never hiked to the arch from here before. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. Do you like all the tumbleweeds that have been blown up against the fence here? And did you know the tumbleweed is not native to the Western US? It's called Russian something or another, like Russian thistle bush or brush, something like that. I believe Russian thistle was brought to this part of the country as seed, as feed for horses. And then it just started growing and going wild from there. and. Yeah, kind of a, an ecological disaster in many ways. But anyway, I'm headed toward these rocks in front of me. Toward these, to be more specific. Delicate Arch is somewhere over there. I've been, I've been looking for it. I don't think I can quite see it yet. Or if it is visible from here, it's just blending into the rocks behind it and I haven't been able to, to distinguish it yet. So I do get phone reception here. So I decided to look up Russian thistle to see exactly what the, the history of it was. Let me read to you a little bit. So it's native to Eurasia, but it appeared in South Dakota in the 1870s when flaxseed from Russia turned out to be contaminated with the tumbleweed seeds. And by the way, the road to the trailhead is mostly good. And I think most vehicles shouldn't have too much of an issue except for the last about three miles from there on you really do need high clearance you don't need four-wheel drive but you need high clearance like my rav4 couldn't have made it there there are some rutted kind of sandy sections and then there are also some some sandstone some rock ledges or steps that you need a decent amount of clearance for So it took me 29 minutes to get to the first rock formations. You can see out here, Jug Rock, and my car parked over to the right of it. And from this point, I can't see Delicate Arch, but I can see the throngs looking at Delicate Arch. There are more people over here, just lots, lots and lots of people over here. This route that I've chosen will meet up with the main Delicate Arch Trail in a little bit, and then I'll follow that for the last little stretch to the arch itself. And one thing that I wanted to mention is that it's the weekend right now, and so there are just a ton of people in Moab, a ton of people in arches, and I'm the only one hiking from this side. I was the only car parked over there, and that's that's pretty darn neat. I'm gonna be sharing the arch itself with probably a few hundred of my closest new friends over here. But you know what? There are some things that are worth putting up with, with crowds for. Like, I'm not a, a crowds person. I don't like being around other people. Delicate arch is worth doing, even if you hike the regular route that, that is really popular, because it is just so iconic and gorgeous. You just need to keep in mind that 
this isn't going to be a, a solitary wilderness experience when you come to a place like this, when you go visit a site that's as well-known and popular as this. And I think that if you're one of the people who complains about crowds in the national parks, like it's one thing to, to note the fact that there are crowds in the national parks, but if you're actively complaining about it, if you're unable to find solitude in the national parks, that's on you because it's pretty easy to get off the beaten path in, in every national park that I've been to and to have places all to yourself. I also don't really have sympathy for people who are like, back in my day, the parks weren't crowded at all. Well, that's not because you did anything. You were just born earlier. <laughs> so, you know, don't complain that people want to get out and see nature. I think overall, it's a good thing that more people want to enjoy the outdoors. Oh my gosh, there are, <laughs> having said all of that, there are so many people. I can see just a line, a conga line of people heading up the, the ramp to the viewpoint here. And I can see the tippy top of Delicate Arch. So first of all, we have this little arch. It's called Twisted Donut Arch. And you pass right underneath it. You can see, you can see the people hiking underneath it. Then from the trail, you can crawl up into the opening there. And from there, you have a good view of Delicate Arch. And if we zoom out a little bit and pan, oops, pan to the left, you can see that ledge that people are hiking along. And then there, right there, right in the middle now, that's the top of Delicate Arch. So what I'm going to do is uh, basically hike over to this part right here and then walk along that ramp, follow the ramp up to the arch. All right, so here's Twisted Donut Arch. Great name for it. You can see why it's called that. And then here's the view through the arch. And we have our first look at Delicate Arch over here. And then our first view from down below should be coming up pretty quick here. <laughs> there it is. It's such an amazing thing to see. And there seems to be an unofficial thing happening where like just one person or one group at a time is is standing under the bridge, is visiting underneath the, the arch there. Oh yeah, here's the line right here, the line of people waiting to get their, their money shot. You know, lots of people here, but still worth doing. This is still an awesome thing to see, still an awesome place. And then here's the side view, so you guys can see how skinny it is. And to the left here, there's a sheer drop off. Over here, there are a couple of viewpoints. In fact, I can see people over here right now. See those people right in the middle there? These are some easier viewpoints if you don't want to hike to this spot. You can drive to a viewpoint over here and then you can hike up a little ways to this one right here. So just pretend this is me right here and you'll get an idea of what it would look like with me standing underneath it. All right, I'm getting out of here. <laughs> See you guys back at the car. All right, made it back to the car. I'm actually on top of Jug Rock, that big blob of a rock right next to the, the car here. As I was getting back, some other guys came in and they were getting ready to go do the same thing I did, go hike to Delicate Arch. One of them was named Tristan also, so that was fun. It's always meet to, or it's always fun to meet another Tristan out in the wild. But as far as the hike goes, let me give you some stats here. It took me 56 minutes to, to get to the arch. I think it was actually about 45 minutes Then I stopped it after I was already there for about 10 minutes. And it was 1.69 miles each way. So there and back, it'll take you 
maybe a couple hours. Uh, overall, you know, I've done the I've done the regular trail to Delicate Arch, the regular hike to Delicate Arch, several times. I think that's probably a better a better hike. Like it's a better trail. It's more interesting. With this, you just go across this flat this flat landscape here for a while till you get to the the rock formations. The regular Delicate Arch hike is actually pretty good. It's pretty interesting. You, you hike up this big sandstone, this big slick rock slab, basically, and it's a good hike. There are just a lot of people on it, you know. So if you have done that hike already, like I have, this one definitely is worth doing. Um, you know, on a day like today, a warm day in the spring on the weekend, it would be impossible to find parking at the at the regular Delicate Arch parking lot. And here there are two other cars. So big, big difference. I think you can see those three guys out hiking right in the middle there, walking toward the rocks way out there. But let me show you the, the rock that I'm on. The cool thing about this is that there are a couple of big potholes here. Let's be careful with where I'm standing. I noticed these on the Google Maps satellite view. There's one right here, and then another one over here. They're basically just sand pits. Now this one is completely filled with sand. This one has a little bit of grass in it. Let's see if I can get down and especially if I can get back out again. I think so, it's not, it's not especially deep. Let's go check out the other one. I don't know if I can if I can get down into this other one, I haven't inspected it very closely. Yeah, I can do this. Oh, there's an interesting little bone down here that I'll show you in a minute. Yeah, some poor little creature got stuck in here. Any idea what that is? What that belonged to? Hmm. Yeah, this one's definitely a little bit more tricky to get out of. I would not recommend coming down into this one if you're alone. Whew. All right, gotta get off this thing now. I actually wanna go see another thing like this. Off in the distance here, there's another rock formation with a, I think an even bigger pothole on it. So I wanna go check that out. But just to wrap this up, I'm not going back into Arches National Park today. I'm gonna to see a few other things in this area, but I don't wanna go back into Arches today. This area is far less crowded and not quite as interesting, not quite as beautiful, but interesting and beautiful enough for me on this trip. So let me show you this thing over here. I think it's this one right in the middle here that has the big pothole on it, but I'm not entirely sure. And then uh, the immediate thing I need to do is is uh, get off this thing that I'm on now. And I think I'll just go back the way I came up, which is following this ridge right here. Okay, I've parked on this big slick rock shelf and I think my destination is this? But I'm not sure, I have it marked on my phone. That formation is only about four tenths of a mile away as the crow flies, but I'm gonna have to go in and out of washes and go around some, some big rock formations. So not sure how long it'll take me to get there, but it shouldn't take more than, I don't know, half an hour maybe.
Okay, I've just rounded a corner here and this is what I'm aiming for. I don't think I can get up over on this side, so I'm gonna try to get up over here. It looks a little bit more doable. I don't know anything about getting up here, so I don't know if it's even possible, but I'll give it a shot. So I just climbed up this little section right here. Then I looked around and saw that someone had stashed a ladder. Can you see that? Someone put a ladder behind that boulder there. So I'm obviously not unique in wanting to climb to the top of this thing. But uh, now that I'm here, I should be able to see, yeah, this, uh, this pothole right here. Whoa, much, much bigger than the other ones. 10 times bigger, if not more. I'm gonna go stand on the opposite rim, on the opposite side, so you can get an idea of how big this thing is here. Well, I have to say, this was a really surprisingly fun and surprisingly beautiful adventure. I thought that there would probably be some anchors up here somewhere, some bolts or something, so that people could rappel down inside. I'm guessing people have done that, but I've, I've walked around the, the entire thing now and I didn't see any bolts, any artificial anchors. There might be something you could use for a natural anchor, but I'm not sure. What? A strange thing. Is this as spectacular as Arches National Park? No, it's not. But it's hard to make a one-to-one -one comparison. You go to Delicate Arch, which I can see, well I can't see the arch, but I can see the area just a few miles over that way. You go there and you share it with hundreds of other people. If Delicate Arch is a 100 out of 100, you divide that 100 by a couple hundred and you're left with a very small number. Let's say that this, this giant hole in, top of this, in the top of this giant rock is, what, a 60 or 70 out of 100? You divide that by one, and it's a much larger number. Of course, that math <laughs> doesn't really translate perfectly, but you get what I'm saying? Like, there is real value in having something amazing like this all to yourself. Even if it's not world-class, like Delicate Arch over there, it's really freaking cool. It's a really neat, strange, unique thing. And I do think it is worth seeing things like Delicate Arch, but, you know, after I've seen that, after I've done that, I'd much rather spend my time in places like this. I'm standing up on top of the entire formation, by the way. Let me give you a look at what I have around me. So I came from this direction. I came between this rock and this rock. I'm parked somewhere over here. Came over this way came up over in this direction. Just sandstone bowls and towers, sandstone mountains really, just all around me. And then here's the giant pit. It's like something from Star Wars, the Sarlacc pit. Over here we have the LaSalle Mountains, which go up to 13,000 feet. I have at least a couple of videos of me climbing the highest mountains in that mountain range. I'll link to them below if I can remember which ones they are. And then here's looking back toward Arches National Park. So this is the core of Arches. This little point right here, that is Elephant Butte. That is the highest point in the entire national park. I've climbed up that a couple of times. I'll put that link down below. This right here is Jug Rock. That's where I started the, the hike over to Delicate Arch, which is over here somewhere. Just a quiet, incredibly beautiful place. Oh, I can see my car. Let's see if I can show it to you on the camera here. It's shining. 
right in the middle there. And I guess I didn't come out and explicitly say it, but there's no way to get down into this thing without rappelling into it. And I don't think I showed you what's in there either, but it's just sand with some vegetation. All right, time to head back. Okay, made it back to the car without any issues. Drove five or 10 minutes up the road, and I'm now gonna go for yet another hike. It's about a mile each way to something else that I wanna go see that I haven't been to before. I know there's been a lot of just desert hiking in this video, so I'm not gonna film a ton going there and back. Uh, maybe a couple of clips, but uh, I'll let you know once I get there. And now after a pretty moderate 29 minute hike, I did have to go around a couple of little cliff bands, but it wasn't anything too crazy. I've arrived at Winter Camp Arch. Pretty little arch. The top here is a little bit wider than a sidewalk. It's flat, it's solid. In Arches National Park, you're not allowed to climb on top of arches, but here, this is outside of the National Park, so not a big deal. And I think now I'm gonna hike back to the car. From there, I'm gonna drive a handful of miles that way to go see something that I've been wanting to see for a while. It's a viewpoint, actually. So I'm gonna stop recording here. I'll start recording again with some driving footage once I get back to the car, then we'll head out to the viewpoint and uh, we'll go from there. But overall, cool little arch, not, not a top tier arch, nothing like delicate arch, of course, but again, I have it all to myself. And uh, I think this is a fairly obscure place to visit, so worth doing just for that. Alright, so I just spent the last 25 minutes or so driving across this broad plateau called Dome Plateau. And I'm now at the edge of that plateau at a spot called Dome Plateau Overlook. And the view is just incredible. I'm just right at the edge of this big series of cliffs, looking out over the Colorado River. The Colorado River flows this way toward, toward Moab. This area over here is called Castle Valley. And then these are the La Salle Mountains again. And then over here we have the Fisher Towers, which is one of the more interesting areas around Moab, I think. Just spectacular, weird, rocky towers over there. You can see the road that leads out there. You can drive any road or any car out there. It's a pretty good unpaved road. But yeah, just incredible, incredible view. Worth the drive out here for sure. Assuming I can drive back out of here and get back to the highway and everything, uh, this is definitely worth the, the detour, worth the drive. Just incredible views here. I had to park a little bit above the actual viewpoint. I mean, I can see my car, it's not far away, but the last little stretch of road looked a little bit tight, uh, so I just parked at a, at a large pullout up over this way. And from here, I'm gonna drive back across Dome Plateau, gonna drive back to the interstate to I-70, then head over and then down through Moab. And I'm, I might need to run a couple errands, buy some groceries and stuff in Moab, but uh, I'm gonna drive through Moab, not really see anything else while I'm here, uh, but I'm gonna drive another hour or two south of Moab and try to find a campsite 
somewhere there for the night to get me set up to be close to where I'm going to be tomorrow for what I'm going to be doing tomorrow. So uh, I'm going to do all that drive and I'm not going to film any of it. I'll just meet back up with you when I get to camp sometime, hopefully before sunset. All right, everyone, it's about 7.30, the sun just set. I've got a campsite here. I'm high up in the mountains. I wanted a higher elevation campsite tonight because I wanted cooler air. I like sleeping in cooler air. I sleep better when it's cold outside. So I figured instead of sleeping at like 5,000 feet, I'd sleep at 8,000 feet. So here we are. There's still snow on the ground and the road is a little bit muddy from the melted snow, but it wasn't too bad. I'm in the Abajo Mountains, also called the Blue Mountains, near Monticello, which is south. It's like the next town south of Moab. There's some windmills over here, and a couple of, uh, there's a, a trailer here. This is national forest land here, and the trailer had a U.S. government license plate on it, so I assume they're doing some construction or maintenance up here. There's also a little tractor thing over there. I don't think anyone else has camped in this area. They're probably lower in elevation than where I am here. I want to show you something. You might have noticed that on this trip I have a five gallon gas can strapped to the top. Let me show you how I've got it strapped, first of all. It's nothing too crazy. Just got some tie down, some ratcheting tie downs holding it down. And then also, so I tried to use the gas in here. I have five gallons in here. It's full right now. I'm a week into this trip and I figured that once a week I would take it down, I'd put the gas in the car, then I'd put new gas into the gas can. And so I unbuckled everything, I took the straps off, I brought the gas can down, and I tried to put it, I tried to fill the tank here, but this part on the gas can wasn't quite long enough. It needed to be another, I don't know, half inch or, or inch long. Because when I tried to put it in here, it couldn't depress that thing. So the, the tip of the, of the spout was like right here and it wasn't pushing in on that. And so I would try to put gas in here and the weight of the gas itself wasn't enough to actually get it to go down into the tank. And so I need either a funnel or a tube to help with that. And if the tube was long enough, I could basically just tip this forward from up here and have the tube come down this way into there. I don't know if it's worth it. I think that a funnel would probably just be easier. But uh, yeah, I thought that was kind of a, an interesting thing to realize. Luckily, I didn't need this. I didn't need the extra gas. I had maybe half a tank left. I just wanted to, to use this up. Really, I wanted to test this out for the upcoming Alaska trip that I'll be doing that later this year. Uh, I wanted to see just how I liked having that thing up there, if it cause any problems. I don't think it has so far, but I'm glad I went through this this kind of practice trip because I learned that, yeah, if I needed that, it would be hard to get it in to the actual gas tank. So anyway, I thought that was interesting. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I had a great time. It was fun going into arches. It was fun seeing Delicate Arch, and it was fun exploring those other areas that I had never been to before. And I was thinking, I forgot to fly the drone when I was on top of that that big rock, that big rock with the big pothole in the top. I had the drone with me and I just didn't even think to fly the drone. So my bad, sorry about that. Should have done that. It would have been really cool to get that aerial view, but oh well, it was a long day, busy day. Anyway, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know what your favorite part was. I'll see you guys in the next one. Be sure to check out Adventure Know How, my new site, where you can gain access to a map of all of my free campsites, plus monthly bonus videos that you won't find anywhere else. Learn more at adventureknowhow.com. And for links to everything else SUV RVing related, visit suvrving.com. Links to these sites and more will be in the video description.